Hello, my name is Trey. Welcome to What Can I Change? Welcome to a little bit of Off the Clock. It's pretty late at night, so, you know, we're just chilling. Nothing too crazy. Um, let's go ahead and get right into this video. This is about a nine-year-old who is getting arrested. I wanted to talk about this because I have experience in this. This is, this is what I dealt with in my life. Of course, I'm not a cop, but I dealt with these type of children. Let's get to it. Holy child. Huh? No. <laughs> so I'm just going to give my insights on this in the beginning. Uh, what What's different for me that I'm seeing with this is just I have a lot of questions. First of all, well, I'll let it play for y'all and then I'll talk about it. Jira Mankata's body cam, you can see the child throwing paper and books that have been scattered across the floor as staff members attempt to calm the child down. Officer Mankata then tries to approach the student to try to de-escalate the situation, but the officer is met with fists and profanity from the nine-year-old. Ow! Don't f oh, you wanna throw stuff though, right? Fuck you, bitch. That's okay, I get that a lot. It doesn't hurt my feelings. Okay, so, number one. I could tell you this, look, I got a lot. People like this, when they see a kid acting like this and you're the person in authority, they're looking at you like, what are you going to do? Number two, um, that's the one of, that's one of the most annoying things on the planet is because we're supposed to at least watch the kid for a little bit. We're not supposed to just run in there and just gun him up, uh, gun him up. We're not supposed to watch in there and just run up on him and just, you know, immediately put them in a restraint. We're supposed to see how things are going. We try to de-escalate first. See, when you restrain a kid, it's the last resort. So I don't like the look this woman's giving. I don't know if that's why she's giving the look, but I just know this look of, are you going to do something about this? Number two, this kid must not be, this must not happen normal with this kid because when a kid acts like this and it's a normal occurrence, if this would, this kid would not even be anywhere around this kind of stuff. This kid looks like they're in the mail room at the teacher's lounge. There's no way this kid would have got that far if this was a kid who did this on the norm. Because kids who do this on the norm typically have a paraprofessional with them in a one-on-one -on -one to keep it from the kid getting this far. Because this kid is around tables and corners. This kid can bust his head on stuff. So this kid must have... This must be a kid that's not in special education or behavioral classes or anything like that and has a one-on-one. -on -one. This kid must have went off once they got into this area. This must be a kid that doesn't normally do this. That's just my observation. Introducing the next generation. Oh no, you're not getting no free credit off me. <laughs> uh, no, no. Time by kicking the teacher. Next officer Scott Mosley responds to the classroom while the student continues to throw items across the room, including a wet floor sign. Moments later, Officer Mosley handcuffs the student, which according to the incident report, the officer did so out of concern for others in the room. So, the, and another thing is, I question is that these paraprofessionals or teachers or administrators or whatever, do they not, does nobody in the school have CPI training? Uh, for guys who don't know what that is, CPI is, um, Restraint is how that's how you restrain a kid and stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> in order for you to be able to restrain a kid and be okay and legally backed up, you need to take CPI training. So nonetheless, if if there's teachers at the school that has CPI training, they should have been able to restrain this kid way before we got to this point. Something tells me that this school either didn't have CPI or for some odd reason, there was nobody in the building that had CPI because normally when a kid acts like this, you can CPI any kid. Any kid can have CPI restraints on them. Um, <laughs> unless I'm sadly mistaken, but every school I've worked at, CPI is allowed. And I've worked in different states as well. So I don't understand why it got to this point and it felt like that the handcuff. I will say this as well, though. Um, should CPI not work, right? You get CPI and the kid still never calms down because I told you some of these kids, when they go off, they go off for a very long time. So if we CPI a kid first and it still doesn't calm down after like 30 minutes of doing it or something like that, maybe not that long. That's a little long to be holding a kid in a restraint. But after a while, if it doesn't come down, we then we do call the cops and the cops do come and get the kid and call the parents to come get the kid or the cop takes the kid to the parents' house. Wait. So you come down. 
This is where we're at. Me personally, me personally, my thoughts on this, I don't think they should have, I don't, I don't like, if they were going to put the kids in hand, because they should have caught the parents, had the kid, kid picked up, but... How long they had the kid in handcuffs is a little weird to me. They should have caught the parents when this started. I don't know if the mom works an hour away or something, but normally it, you'll see. You'll see they put this kid in handcuffs and they take a while to get him to calm down. was heard trying to get the child to cool down. The kid, the, okay, so I'm gonna be honest with you. The kid screaming, um, and the kid yelling. One, one, these kids do yell profanity when they get. That's what kids do when they get to escalated. So I'm not bothered by that. But the the kid yelling and screaming, that's completely normal, guys. I mean, that's why I'm wondering if this kid was already in these kind of classes. But a kid yelling and screaming and saying "ow," this hurt. I mean, that is normal. When you put any child, even an adult, I've had it both ways. But even if you put a child in restraint. They are normally going to start screaming and saying ow and all this. I don't think the cop is hurting them. We've seen cops put people in handcuffs and they tend to go, ow, you're hurting me. Ow, my shoulder. Ow, my hip. Ow, my leg. Kids do the same thing. <laughs> Kids do the exact same thing. That's why you have training. That's why you do CPI training. Um, so you don't have to. So you know where to hold a kid, how to hold a kid. Normally you have. If a kid's this crazy and they're nine years old, you tend to have two or three people doing the CPI hold because it's hard to do it on one person as when kids get this old when kids get older. But nonetheless, yeah, man, the, the yelling and all that, I just that is the phase me. If you're not used to doing this kind of restraints, then yeah. You might be like, Oh my god, you're hurting them, but no. Stop picking at my hand. And I'm sure these police officers have been trained how not to hurt a kid, obviously. Because cops are training in the same you. thing in restraints. You know, in no situation, you would be in very big trouble. For All right, so no big deal here. Here's my only problem I have with the entire video. This part right here. This part right here, I have a problem with. And here's why. The reason I have a problem with this is because the head of the child is near this wooden part. Okay, you never and I, I'm not I'm not banging on the cops or anything, uh, whatever, you know, because this was done months ago. Uh, you can see up there at the top February 2nd. But if you restrain a kid, the number one, well, not the number one thing, but one of the number one things we teach, do not have a kid head near a wall, near sharp objects. Or anything they can hit their head on. This is one of the most dangerous positions I've seen. Like this would bother me. If I was standing there. Especially with CPI training. And I know that the cops have far more training than I do. As far as all this kind of stuff. But for me personally. If we saw that. That's something that if I was at a school and I did that. We would get in trouble for something like that. Like somebody who would walk in. Who has CPI training as well. Would walk in. And we have people come from outside to School psychologists and stuff like that. But, or your CPI trainer. <laughs> but anyway, if they came in and saw this, I think they'd have a problem because this kid's head is next to the corner of the shelf. I've worked with way too many kids who headbutt. I've worked with way too many kids who would literally hit their head against the wall. I had a kid who would beat their head against the wall. There's just no way on earth you could ever retrain this kid against the wall. It was just a... You knew if you did that, they were going to crack their head on a wall. And this is one of the scariest things ever when you make that mistake. So I don't know why this cop had. I mean, the way the cop is set up and I don't know what led to this. But what if this kid just went, just did a quick boom right there and cracked their head on this, this corner, which would probably cause a little bit of a bleed. The cop couldn't get to him fast enough. There's just no way because the kid's head is far enough away that if he just did that. He could really hurt his head on that corner. So that is the one, the biggest thing that I had a problem with in this entire video. The handcuffing I've seen, I probably wouldn't have gone there. I think the mom should have been there by now or the, or the father or somebody, the guardian, something should have been there by now. 
I don't know how long this goes on, but it looked like it goes on for a good while. Uh, so normally you don't have you don't restrain a kid for this long. Like I said, I know I said earlier 20 minutes, but I was exaggerating. Normally, I say when you do a CP hold, CPI hold, it, it does not last that long. If you cannot get a kid to calm down, and I know it's different in other places, so I'm just going to say this five minutes or less is normally where I've heard. I know it may be different at different schools, different, you know, every education system and licensing is different. But I think anything over five minutes is a little long for a restraint um, because at that point, um, that's when, from my, from my experience, when it starts getting over five minutes, that's when you try to let the kid go and you try to see if they're calmed down. Then you may be able to go, I think, I really think I'm overdoing it. I'm saying five minutes at the max. I really think it, you hold a kid about two minutes. Um, two minutes is about as long as you go. And then you let go of the restraint. If they don't calm down, you may go back into another hold. But you don't do that a lot. Okay, you don't go hold them two minutes, hold them two minutes, hold them two minutes. Normally, at some point, you go, okay, look, <laughs> call the mom, call the father. We got to get this kid out of here because this kid is not coming down. And then you send them home. And we've had to do that a lot um, in my school and other schools. Or you call the cops to take the kid home. Um, but yeah, it seemed like this kid's been restrained well over two minutes. And if it got into the five minute range, that's way too long to have a kid in restraint, in my opinion. Max five minutes, but two minutes is about where I think the standard is. So I had a problem with this whole part. Now, after this, the kid does, the, like they that. end up calling the kid's parents to send them home. No, I don't want to see you go to jail for things like that. Okay. You can get, you can get in trouble for hitting staff too. You can't. He's clearly in trouble. Okay, I've done it since pre-K. That's not nice. Why do you do those see, things? See that right there? you done it since pre-K. This made me think this kid is normally in this state. So I'm surprised that this kid got anywhere. Normally you have a room for this or a classroom or something. Normally you're prepared for kids like this. So I'm surprised that they let this kid get all the way into the teacher's lounge by all these tables with sharp objects and all this stuff. I don't see how you let this kid get this far. Um, but I'm not judging the school, but I'm just surprised. I just haven't seen a whole lot of situation where kids get this far. Now, kids do take off running. That does happen. And that may have been what happened here. Um, so anyway, the parents end up um, suing the school. If this kid is like this on a normal week to week basis or normal month to month basis, the parents are going to lose that lawsuit. Sorry. <laughs> They're going to lose that lawsuit because schools do have uh, things in place for kids like this. Um, now, my only question is that there was no CPI, sh no CPI holds, no CPI restraints. So maybe they may have a case um, because the, the school did not do any kind of restraints or anything like that. They immediately put them in handcuffs near this object. That's what if I was a parent, I would argue this part right here. Be like, what is this? You can't put his head near the edge of a corner. Anyway, guys, I just wanted to get my quick little insight on this, give a little bit of my background um, to say that I, I personally disagree with what the cops did. I don't know if I go as far as to sue them because this kid has always been like this. It's going to be a hard, but I would go as far to say that it wasn't handled as properly as it could. And that's also to say that most of these cases, you can probably always find something that goes wrong. Even if they did the proper CPI hold, did everything right, did it within the two to five minutes. It's hard, man. It's real hard to be perfect. So I'm not killing the school on this. I'm not blaming the school on this. I'm just saying this is a tough situation. But let me know what y'all think in the uh, comment section down below. If you are a paraprofessional or a behavioral specialist that's had to deal with something like this, let me know what you think. I'm gone.